It's finally here, the latest prototype of the Limitron. Continuing the polish and things are looking great. Shout out to my first 200 subscribers. You showed me that you find a unibody positron interesting. So thank you for that. But the first video was very light on some details. So here's everything I didn't tell you that you wanted to know. Something that concerns me with this design is that there is no structural support. V3 and Journeymaker use a base plate while the LT uses maker beams. So how does this design compare in structural support? Any flexing in the design? I got you. Looking back, it is funny how unclear the unveil video was, but this is the base plate and it's 14.5 millimeters thick, which is pretty thick and strong, even though it's printed as fast as possible and it's practically hollow. I printed the new one in normal settings and it came out even better, so we're looking good. How much support material for that? None. Not sure if you will be able to fit an extruder inside. Would be a very tight fit. I did. Will you be releasing any CAD for this? Limitron will be available for free. Do you have to cut the motor shafts with this design? Yes, and due to its shared parts, many of the other dimensions are equal. How would you handle cooling of the motors PSU and Pico, as they already get quite toasty in the mostly open Journeymaker design? Cooling will be handled by integrated air ducts to get the most cooling out of the fans. Uh, in the prototype, there is no motor cooling yet because I just needed to wire it up and feel the heat. And even if it only prints for five minutes, that's gonna inform the design. Motor cooling is one of the last few absolute requirements left. The fan grills are looking pretty cool though, but we'll have to see how loud it is. And if we need more cooling, I already have more ideas. Do you think it would be compatible with other Positron variants? As for compatibility, there is some. On the plus side, if you have parts for the Journey Maker, you have parts for the Limitron, plus extra, minus the extruder motor and drive gear, which amount to under $20. Also, I got a pretty rough bill of materials I made, not double checked or anything. It's over $100 shaved off the Journey Maker. All that hardware shaved really adds up. I think ultimately we're looking at a sub $600 build and it would make sense to undercut the Positron 3.2. Okay, that's it for the first prototype. On to what everyone is here for, the new one. Previously, I had mentioned that some of the next steps were to add removable top plates, which I've done, and they have some internal features, which I'm pretty proud of. The right plate is straightforward. In addition to covering the belts, it has a cavity for the top of the PSU, which is open on one side so that the forced air from a fan can be vented, completing a seamless air cooling system with no visible exhaust port. Nice. As for the left top plate, I had mentioned I wanted to move the extruder off of the z-axis and into the main body, taking up some of the last remaining space inside of it, which is what you want to see in a portable printer, you want to see all the space being used efficiently. First, I walked down the wrong path by trying to copy the hummingbird extruder design into the unibody. However, the hummingbird is too tall, so I tried to split it in two and fold it over. But to get power transmission to the drive gears, I had to add these two gears and shafts. This was getting stupid. But then I remembered my old Ender 3 had an absolutely tiny extruder with a very low height that was just one millimeter too tall. And I did find a slightly shorter extruder called a Micro Swiss. And wow, what a nice product. And I did manage to fit it in, but two things. At $50, it's a hard sell because that's a $50 part that everyone building a Limitron would need to buy but I was about to send it and make the video and swap it for a cheaper part later. But after printing out the prototype with this enormous cavity to support it and also using only one mounting screw, which just felt wrong, it looked jerry-rigged and it was clear I had no choice but to make a custom extruder. Tacking on an extruder onto the mile long list of things I had to engineer seemed terrible. However, I had overestimated what needed to go into it. I had it modeled and a prototype printed within a day. And not only that, but it actually could be the coolest extruder ever. The biggest hurdle was just getting over this preconceived notion that it had to be a dual drive extruder. But I came across a video of a guy who tracked the issue he was having down to his dual drive gears. You take them a bit out of alignment and you get an even backlash, which is when there's a little gap so they don't rotate perfectly in sync. One of them sometimes lags a tiny bit behind and sometimes rotates a tiny bit faster to catch up. The whole video was a good video by the way, and thanks to that guy, that freed me to make this single drive version. 
Anyways, just the way that all these pieces fit together in a tiny area is a sight to see. And it's a great thing to experience as a designer. I'm just proud it feels so solid, not a hack job, blah, blah, blah. And in the last video, the last thing I mentioned was that I wanted to solve the issue of filament holding. As you know, the current designs of the Positron are just the printer and not including any sort of filament spool arm or whatever. And in that case, you're going to use these little stands and your filament spool turns on the bearings. But sometimes filament comes on cardboard spools or comes without a spool, which is why I came out with this sick feature. A Bowden tube that snakes through the printer and out the bottom at an angle. But why? Okay, so we already know the Positron can fit in a filament box, but we're also going to fit the filament in the Positron. I haven't modeled it yet, so hear me out. Basically, I'm thinking there's an extension of the profile of the Limitron, creating a base for the Limitron to sit on. And in it contains the volume required to fit a full full of filament. And there's a central bearing that allows the filament to spin and unload directly into the Bowden tube, meaning that yes, not only does this printer fit inside of a filament box, but so does its first accessory, a dry box. Not to mention, there's nothing stopping us providing power to it. Think, if you're on the go, you're not in your air-conditioned office or dorm room, and in a portable printer, you want to be able to trust that no matter where you are, you can always print. So even if you're in Thailand, in a summer, after a monsoon, you could print. But dear lord, this 3D swooping geometry stuff is one of those head smashing things to do properly in CAD. And if you want to save my sanity, like and subscribe, because you're not going to want to miss my next video where I print a benchy. I'm sure everyone wants to see it being put together. So let's see the complete assembly process of the new prototype. I've laid out all the hardware that will be used for the base at the top of the screen. I'll start by screwing in the AC input jack and I'll grab the two mid plates and I'll screw in the right mid plate and the bottom screw has a bearing on it. You can use your choice of bearing. Next I'll lay down all the wires going from the extruder to the left mid plate. And then I'll fasten it with screws. I'll flip it over and drop in the Z-axis motor, the extruder motor, one of the AB motors, and the other one. I'll flip it over and I'll start fastening all the motors. The four screws on the AB motors are different and have pulleys on them. I'll drop in the power supply and secure it with four screws. Setting the base aside, I'm going to grab the top plates and I'm going to screw in the Bowden collet. For this to work, I have to heat it up. I'm going to try to replace this part in a future revision, but here it is going in just fine. And I'll go ahead and put the extruder together. First I'll insert the thumb screw, then I'll drop in the back of the extruder, drop in a strong spring, followed by a bearing, and then the top. And I'll secure it all together with three screws. Now that's spring loaded and ready to go. Next I'll push a Bowden tube all the way into the channel and press it down. There's one more thing that we have to do to the Bowden tube which is to drill a hole through it so that the filament can be fed from the side. So here I just test fit the filament to make sure that it works. I'll put these aside start putting the oh shit make sure you drop all your balls oh that sucks all the balls just fell out all right I got all the balls back in sheesh I'll install this z-axis assembly straight off of the journey maker screwing in each screw now when we're attaching the gear to the motor it's incredibly easy there's a hole in the side you can just push a hex key through and it will line up everything perfectly and you can tighten it down and now it's at the perfect height to match up with the rest of the extruder but we'll set the extruder aside for a moment because we have to route the build
Next I'll put on the idler pulley for the z-axis and now it's finally time to cover it all up with the two top plates. Now the left top plate we have to take that Bowden tube and fish it through the entire printer and the right top plate just simply lays on. Now these screws go all the way through the printer which is not a good design because it makes taking the top plates on and off difficult. I'll be addressing this soon. I'll take this journey maker tool in and install it on the rail. Attach the tool in to the belt and we are looking good. Well, there you have it. I am loving this second prototype. There will be a third prototype and video followed by the beta release for you to print at home. A video for that. And if Limitron has you puckering for a performant portable printer, give it your appeal of approval by smashing that subscribe button. Limitron!